Okay, uh, thanks, Nina. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Ulf Grüße. I'm from the Thun Institute in Germany, and um, uh, our job to do in the Refugio project was uh, the production of uh, bio-based uh, glycolic acid. Next slide, please. So, um, uh, glycolic acid um, uh, is already an industrial uh, product um, to some minor extent, uh, currently prepared by um, carbonylation of formaldehyde, but the major part uh, by hydrolysis of chloroacetic acid. Um, <clears throat> the feedstocks uh, used uh, in these uh, industrial processes are fossil based and um, so we search for uh, a bio-based alternative and there are uh, several. Uh, for example, fermentation of sugars, uh, therefore you need uh, genetically modified organisms and uh, so far uh, teeters and yields are too low uh, to be uh, of interest. There's a way of uh, microbial oxidation of acetylene gly uh, glycol. There uh, you have a drawback that uh, cofactor is needed and medium is quite expensive. So um, uh, other uh, possibilities, catalytic oxidation of glycerol, but uh, uh, you also have low selectivity and various uh, byproducts. So we decided um, um, to have the approach of catalytic oxidation of acetylene glycol. Next slide, please. So where come uh, ethylene glycol uh, come from? Um, uh, it's currently um, petrochemically um, produced in multi-million ton scale uh, from ethylene uh, via ethylene oxide. This is a uh, very nice uh, uh, value-added chain because um, uh, it has a 100% uh, atom uh, efficiency. Next slide, please. However, what is uh, the drawback is uh, that crude oil uh, is needed uh, for the production of uh, ethylene, and this, of course, is a non-eco-friendly feedstock. However, we can take advantage of this uh, um, established uh, value-added chain by just replacing crude oil, by the next slide, please, <laughs> um, and use uh, bioethanol. Um, bioethanol can be uh, converted in 99% yield to uh, ethylene, and then we enter um, in a drop-in way um, the uh, current value-added chain. So, of course, um, currently uh, bioethanol is mainly produced from first-generation feedstocks, but um, research all over the world is um, going on um, to be able to um, efficiently use second-generation feedstocks like uh, lignin cellulose, for example. So, um, uh, and then we uh, end up uh, with uh, the so-called bio uh, monoethylene glycol, which is currently, uh, in fact, produced um, in about 175,000 uh, uh, tons per year. And this is the one we heard about, um, um, which is used for Coca-Cola's plant bottle. So, and this is uh, our feedstock, and uh, we carry out uh, a uh, selective oxidation to bioglycolic acid. Next slide, please. Yeah, um, um, you see on top um, this uh, reaction scheme, uh, and you see that um, glycolic acid is not uh, the end product um, uh, of the reaction sequence, uh, but uh, it is an intermediate, so we have to uh, have a look uh, that uh, the uh, second uh, hydroxylic group uh, remains intact um, uh, and is not further oxidized to uh, oxalic acid. So we decided to use uh, gold platinum catalysts uh, and uh, in our first reaction we already had a uh, uh, glycol conversion of more than 80% and uh, glycolic acid selectivity of uh, almost 80%. However, um, the reaction time was too long to be uh, of interest. So we decided to optimize both the catalyst uh, uh, as far as the metal loading and uh, the ratio of gold and platinum is concerned uh, and optimize the preparation procedure of the catalyst. 
we had a look at the reaction conditions, pH, temperature, uh, glycol concentration, pressure, and so on. And uh, we had a look at the long-term stability of the catalyst. The catalyst you see uh, on the right side uh, of the slide. Um, yeah, and um, after finishing um, our optimization work, we ended up with a uh, glycol conversion of 90% um, with a glycolic acid selectivity uh, which is always higher than 90 percent uh, uh, on the most reaction conditions, 92 till 95 uh, percent. We are working in quite uh, concentrated uh, solutions. Um, it's a fast reaction, reaction time only uh, one hour, and the catalyst can be re reused at least 10 times. Uh, 10 times uh, we carried out a repeated batch uh, experiments. We did not lose any of the selectivity. Yeah, um, so this is process for the production of bio-based uh, glycolic acid and this is uh, also uh, interesting uh, for an industrial uh, point of view. Uh, and the second part of our work um, is displayed in the next slide. Um, this was the isolation and purification. So um, uh, the product from uh, the um, glycol oxidation, uh, we have glycolic acid as main product. We have some unreacted uh, glycol um, and oxalic acid, um, one till uh, three percent maximum um, uh, as byproduct. Um, both uh, acids are um, as a sodium salt due to alkaline reaction conditions. We carried out. Um, as an um, isolation procedure, some salt splitting and uh, electrodialysis we generate some um, uh, sodium hydroxide uh, by this um, downstream processing. And um, uh, we get rid of uh, most of the unreacted uh, MEG, and both the um, sodium hydroxide and MEG can be recycled in the next batch. And uh, uh, we also have some oxalic acid as a byproduct. And we have still some sodium, uh, which is uh, afterwards removed by an ion exchange uh, step. Um, so we end up with a purified aqueous glycolic acid solution, uh, which is a little bit further concentrated to 78%. Um, in lab scale, uh, we were able to have an overall yield of uh, 87%, and in larger scale, um, uh, an overall yield, uh, more than 90% seems uh, pretty much probable. So um, uh, our glycolic acid solution um, has 70% um, glycolic acid, some still some unreacted uh, monoacetylene uh, glycol inside, uh, some D-glycolic acid, which is produced during uh, electrodialysis, almost no sodium inside, and um, this um, was uh, bottled and shipped to our uh, partner Fraunhofer ICT for polymerization. Yeah, and that's um, uh, all about um, glycolic acid. <laughs>